welcome to this morning's Tunisia Tourism <laughs> webinar uh, about Speak Scotland, about how we can use our native languages in our businesses. We are going to be doing two sessions. This is the first one uh, about how we can use our native languages, whether that is Gaelic or Scots or Scots dialect, um, such as Doric or Shetland. We've got three great guests to help us. We discovered that the research shows that Gaelic has the potential to add £148 million to the Scottish economy, and much of that is in tourism. 50% of visitors to Scotland have an interest in learning more about the language. Our guest this morning, we've got Davy Cooper. You are from Shetland. Yes. You're a, a dialect storyteller. Tell yes. us about how you interact with visitors. Um, I, as I say, I'm a, a dialect storyteller, so I um, go around various venues and tell stories in dialect. Um, I'm also uh, an occasional tour guide, um, an occasional Viking. <laughs> uh, and he's an occasional wizard, uh, if required. Is it compulsory to have a beard in Shetland? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, 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 I kind of come from the point of view of there's only two reasons to have a beard. Uh, one's to keep your face warm, and the other's because you're too lazy to shave. <laughs> right, OK. Uh, there's also the weak chin, but we'll not yeah. get into that just now. <laughs> so you interact with visitors through storytelling, um, and you get very involved, as you say, yeah. sometimes getting dressed up, so that's fantastic. Really keep the culture alive there. Donald McSween, you're from Erin Lot, Gaelic name. Um, tell us what Erin Lot means and how visitors get involved with you. Erin Lot is uh, on the croft. Uh, so I am a full-time crofter, uh, got hens for laying eggs, I've got a few hundred sheep, uh, highland cattle, pigs. Uh, I've had lots of people over the years coming to, coming to see the animals. I was getting a bit fed up of it all. So I said, right, if people are going to start coming to see the animals, they can pay me. They're going to pay me. <laughs> right. So now I get lo lots, lots of tourists come. Um, <clears throat> got cruise ships planning coming this year and uh, buses. We all see these buses going past and complain that they're not um, they're not stopping. stopping. So now I just stand on the road and stop them <laughs> and uh, give me some money and come and see the cows. Uh, so yeah, that, that's that's my interaction with uh, with 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 tourists and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's going going well. Mm -hmm. So they can come and get the full crofting yep. experience. Uh, and again, that's part of our of, of our heritage, isn't it? Especially in, in Lewis, where you're. It's part of the busy? heritage, but it's part of my day to day. Yeah, it's your life. <laughs> life it's as your well. Life. Okay. And Caroline Gregory from the Love Hotel, where we are. Uh, Caroline, this is something you are kind of our test case. You're a bit of a guinea pig for us. We're going to be setting you a challenge over the next three weeks to see how you can actually start to do more, introduce more of the native language, which would be Gaelic, uh, into your day to day business operations. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have much experience <coughs> in the language. I think we established maybe a little tiny bit as a child. Yeah, learnt a little bit uh, from a, um, a friend. Dad, uh, counting one to twenty, maybe saying hello and goodbye, and that was pretty much the the size of it. Yeah, the and we're not going to put you on the spot. And no, please see not. if you can remember. Um, so, why do you sort of see uh, now uh, Gaelic as being an asset that you could really use for your business? I just think um, it brings something different to the culture of your business um, for the staff as well as also the experience that the customers will appreciate. Um, and I think you know, based on my own experiences of going abroad, I think you, um, they, they play a lot on what is kind of natural within their kind of culture and, and what they're enthused about. And I think it's really important just to kind of um, to drive that, you know, through tourism and, and also through, <coughs> um, you know, the, the, the people who live here. Really. Yeah. And that's, that's something that keeps coming up um, on every aspect of tourism that we've talked about in Tunis Tourism, is that visitors want that authentic experience. They want to really understand how people live. Uh, understand their culture and, and get a real sense of the, the history of the place, get under the skin of the place. Um, so we want you to help as well. Um, I can't remember how many times I've said it, but um, <laughs> I have created a toolkit um, about using our native languages to help you, loads of resources, but the final step for that is to get your input as well. We want to know what you're doing, what you're having success with, what would be useful for you. And Richard is here. You're going to be sitting in the chat room, Richard, uh, monitoring and letting us know what people are saying. Have we got anybody uh, joining? us yet? Um, thank you Julia. Uh, yes we have got some people watching um, so just as just to reiterate what Julia was saying do get in touch with us and share any little experiences you've had any questions that you might have for our panel here um, and we're going to try and encourage you to uh, do some bits and bobs over the coming weeks but we have got Arthur who is watching um, Anna uh, Rory and we've got Donald McDonald in Sky um, my kid's headmaster is called Donald McDonald. 
Um, and uh, who else is watching? Cameron is in Orkney. So you guys, thanks very much for joining us. And do any questions, any ideas, any tips, anything at all, put them in the chat box and I'll share them with the panel. Okay, well, let's get started. Um, as I said, we've got fantastic guests here with loads of experience to share. Um, so let's start with you, with you, Donald. You are a native speaker of Gaelic. Now, as we've established, you don't need to be um, actually be able to speak the language to use it in your business. Caroline, obviously, is our, is our example of that. But you are a native speaker. And how do you think that helps to give your business an edge, the, the use of the language? Well, I mean, I think I have... <laughs> It's all about stories, really, and, and I, have a, I have a story that goes along with the sector that I'm in. So I'm a crofter, uh, born and raised. The family uh, have been on, on the croft for generations. Um, and, and Gaelic is part of that as well. You know, Gaelic and crofting go hand in hand wh where I am. And uh, it's, a, you know, it's a big part of what ties the community together. You know, everybody speaks Gaelic when we're working together in the Fank communally and things like that. So... Gaelic is, is, a, is a big part of, of my community and of my day-to-day -day life. Um, so how does it attract people? Well, people are interested in, in, in these sectors, I think. They, they have a, perhaps a romantic notion of what, what things are like, or maybe they're just interested from a practical sense in, in terms of crofting or, or, or the language. So there, there are different, uh, different reasons, I think, why people show an interest but there, uh, and the, the, that interest will be at different levels as well but they will come and um, and, and ask and, and sometimes they don't even know that they've got an interest until they until they hear a little bit or they see you know the business name is in Gaelic or uh, I, I usually start by saying a little something to them in Gaelic and then they realize oh this this isn't maybe exactly what I expected maybe it's a little bit different and they're interested in something they didn't even realise they were interested in. Mm -hmm. And you've got sort of three different ways of interacting depending on their level of interest, don't you? Yeah, well, the, 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 the first one would be the person who maybe has no awareness at all of, of Gaelic and doesn't realise that, that, that it even exists. So that, that would be your lowest level. And then you'd have the, 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 the next... So what would you do with them? How would you introduce the language to somebody like that? Well, what's, your way, what's your way in? Gaelic is the medium rather than the message. Okay. So it's, for me, it's not about saying Gaelic, 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 Gaelic. It's about going and saying what I'm going to be saying normally and just it's part and partial. It's normalizing it. Mm -hmm. that's, I think that's the important thing for, for me. Um, so that would be my, that, that's, the, that's the bottom tier there. And then your intermediate tier would be people who have an interest in Gaelic, awareness of Gaelic, but maybe don't know how to speak it or maybe can count to 20, something mm -hmm. like that. So you'd probably be, be in, in, that, in that category. Uh, and they, they have a bit more awareness, um, maybe want that bit more, maybe want to know what I'm saying, have more questions. They, they've got questions before they come. And then you're top tier, you're all singing, all dancing, uh, people who, are, uh, who have Gaelic. You know, I, I, I'm in the position where I can deliver everything in English or in Gaelic. Uh, depending on, on what the what the customer wants, mm -hmm. so you know I, I do that as well. Quite often, people say that they want that they want to to do the whole thing in Gaelic. Maybe they're learning Gaelic and they want to learn the terminology related to crofting, or maybe they just they're just Gaelic speakers and they want to they want to you know something in, uh, to do in Gaelic. Mm -hmm. And I get lots of Gaelic medium uh, education groups as well. They'll come and uh, and we'll do um, they'll do everything from. Come and help you do your crafting. Yeah, yeah muck exactly. Out muck out the hen houses, all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah. Not so, a... so tell me, with the, with the people who got less experience um, or, who, or none, uh, no understanding, what, um, what, how are you using the language? I think you said you, sp you spoke to your animals, for example, in using y Gaelic. Yeah, so, so my, my go-to <laughs> bad gag is I've never heard my animals speak English. Okay. So <laughs> my, uh, but what, I, what I do is I, naturally I, I, sp I speak Gaelic to, to animals. And you know, wherever I, if I was in England or Wales or even Shetland, mm -hmm. I would default to to Gaelic if somebody's dog was there. I'd say, "Oh, hello, Kulan <laughs> Uh And I, I think I, that's just what I do naturally. So my animals, when I'm wanting to call the sheep or the um, the cattle or any or the dogs, even I'll shout throat to them, which is come. Mm -hmm. So the the sheep or the cattle will come to that, and then the dogs, their commands. They're, they're working dogs, but their commands are, are in Gaelic as well. So there's a bit of that. And if I say, you know, you'll do something like, see at the hoon, I'll say that to the dog. And that mm -hmm. is quite, 
sit on your backside. <laughs> so you know you can make it fun. Mm -hmm. You can you can you can um, throw some curveballs in there, and then you've you've got people's attention. It's not mm -hmm. boring. You know, I don't think it's not a lesson. You know, it's not a lesson, teaching and it's not language. you know. And then if there's kids there, I quite often get them right. You've got to shout, throw it to these cows. Mm -hmm. You know, and they'll be going, throw it, throw it, throw it, and they're learning how to say it properly. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's just it's just making it fun, making it interesting, making it engaging. Mm -hmm. And Davy, what about you? What what? How are you using the dialect then, especially with people who maybe had no experience of it? Well, again, it, it, it's the same thing. You get people coming at different levels. Um, you're tourist off of a cruise liner and probably has no experience at all. So when you're telling stories to them, you essentially have to tell in English. Um, but you drop in dialect words because there's some things that you just can't express in English in the same way that you can in dialect. Um, you then have to go into a lengthy explanation as to what the word actually means. But <laughs> that's, um, and but do people like that? Is that, is that oh something yeah, the, the, that they... Uh, um, uh, it's, that's what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, when people end up in Shetland, that's usually because they've made a very deliberate effort to get there. It's <laughs> yeah, not, you really not have the to. easiest <laughs> place to come to. Uh, and they're looking for the fact that being you know, in the middle of nowhere, um, we're very different from pretty much every place else. Mm -hmm. um, our dialect is a dialect of Scots, but it's very, very different. The, the sentence structures are different. The verb usage is different. Uh, we even use a, a slightly continental that we call everything either he or she. There's no mm -hmm. it, basically, mm -hmm. in Shetland dialect. Um, and, you know, going on from that, we get a lot of visits from linguists who are absolutely fascinated with the differences between Shetland dialect and, and the rest of Scots. Mm -hmm. So you'll get a you know professor rocking up that, that, that's wanting to go into it in absolute minute detail. I feel like I'm going to put you on the spot here, but what's your favourite Shetland dialect word that there's no real translation for in, in English? Um, the one that, that probably um, comes up most often is drush. Say it again? Drush. Drush? Yeah. What does that mean? Um, it's what they call, I suppose, in English now, missile. It, it, it's that kind of very small rain that makes you very, very, very wet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that it's, it's, a lot it's, it's, not, it's, not, yeah, it's not big yeah. drops, it's just, and, and um, usually in Shetland it's going horizontally as well. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, they do say that about Inuits, don't they, how many words they've got for snow, and in Scotland it's very true, we have a lot of different words for rain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and people are really interested in that, aren't yeah. they? they? They really enjoy that. Yeah. And so when you're doing tour, um, tours as well, you can bring to life the, the, the different areas and the different stories around Different areas, it. different stories. Um, the place names fascinate people. Ninety-seven percent of our place names are uh, Viking, the Scandinavian. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you explain place names to them. You explain the components of the place names. Um, <coughs> as you tell stories, you will bring out different words uh, to explain different actions that some of your characters are doing. And a lot of the place names actually have stories associated with them. That, that that based on a, a person's name. Or, or, or mm -hmm. um. And so, um, Caroline, have you, have you sort of thought about any of these sort of ways of, of uh, interacting before? Is there anything that you've maybe thought, oh, we could do that, but you've, you know, there's been a barrier f for you? This is all quite new for me, I must, yeah. I must admit. So I hadn't really um, thought in, until you all got in, in touch about what, what we could do. Um, so <coughs> it's just trying to figure out how um, I can integrate it mm -hmm. into the business. I mean, um, we're not a fully fledged kind of Highland hotel that does all the Highland um, add-ons like Kaylee and, and things like that. So I, I think I would have to be quite creative in how we can <coughs> adapt our business to incorporate some of the, the Gaelic. Yeah. Um, whether and it's it about your taste as well and about the kind of business that you want to have. And yeah. there's no reason, it doesn't have to be wearing a kilt, throwing a caber and, you know, exactly. to, be, to incorporate the language. Yeah. Right? You don't have to have tartan It needs, needs to be <laughs> needs to be subtle, it mm -hmm. needs to be quite sympathetically done um, so that there is kind of a careful balance that people don't feel that it's being rammed down their throat yeah. but the way that I would like to probably um, take this on is very similar to how we did our eco 
a conscious kind of outlook where it's actually just kind of embedded within mm. the business and it's something that we just do naturally. Mm -hmm. I really liked what you were saying about having a story and kind of connecting with people and normalizing it. And I think that's really, really important because often you kind of like scream and shout, this is what we're doing as if you have to do it because mm -hmm. this is what somebody says or it has to be part of tourism. But I actually like the fact of maybe just filtering it in just quite mm -hmm. kind of gently mm -hmm. and then seeing what kind of reaction you get. But I think it's going to be really important to signpost to people mm -hmm. like yourselves um, because I can't do everything, you know, yeah. and it's not kind of our day to day. No, but I think I think that's that's a really um, a really good point there. It's it's not about doing it as like oh here's another thing we have to do. Yeah. We have to be eco friendly now. We have to do this. And we have to we have to do it. It's actually something that can be really interesting and give you a renewed passion mm -hmm. really for your business yeah. and bring to life some stories that you maybe didn't even know existed that surround your business. Richard, have we got anybody getting in touch in the the chat box with ideas? We certainly do have people getting in touch um, with some ideas. Um, some of them I don't know realise quite yet. I don't think they realise quite yet what you're volunteering for. Um, <laughs> but uh, thanks for getting in touch. Um, first of all, right. Well, Rory's just sent a thing saying that the, in Gaelic that we have over a hundred words for hill or mountain, and nearly fifty words for a bog. Right. right we're going to test Donald. <laughs> How many can you name? We've got a minute. <laughs> uh, but that's kind of interesting. But he says like like in, visitors are just really interested in that kind of information. You know mm -hmm. that sort of things. That's that's quite interesting. And then who is it? Maggie Smith, who is um, a tour guide and a B and B host in Lewis, um, has created a Gaelic phrase sheet. Um, that she gives to visitors and people really kind of like to see that um, and then which is quite interesting as well and then we've also Cameron um, Taylor who is the ex-CEO of Orkney Tourist Board um, is currently working in Nunavut which is in Arctic Canada um, uh, where language is very much an expression of local culture you know so yeah. he's sort of buying into that and then somebody was asking uh, also just is there anybody that you know is there anybody who does short courses for visitors you know do you know anything about those can you can people sign up for lessons or any of those kind of things um, is a question that somebody has well that's a really good point i think um about using the resources mm. in in your area and it's not just something that you have to do caroline mm -hmm. yourself there are lots of resources that's a, one of the things that is in the tool toolkit um lots of websites for example just as simple as the gallic dictionary <laughs> um and the websites for that, which we'll, we will be providing if you've signed up, we'll be sending you emails and keep an eye on our social channels for that. But what sort of resources, Donald, do you use um, that exist in Lewis? What other uh, businesses can you tie in with or resources do you tie in with? Well, I, this is my resource that I <laughs> use a lot. <laughs> no, yeah. but well, I'm, I'm very lucky in that um, right next door to my croft is Comuniach uh, Nis Ness Historical Society, which is in my old primary school and have just undergone a 1.1 million pound refurbishment and basically my uh, my cows look, can look over the wall into the into the the old playground which is now the car park so like it's really handy for me they've got toilets they've got a cafe I don't have to think about that side of things from a practical sense and also there's there's like the the people that will that are coming in. There's, there's there's customers there already that I can that I can tap into but we complement each other because I get maybe, like, for example, the cruise ships, they're coming to me, and I'm saying to them, well, as part of coming to me, you'll go to the, the museum next door and the cafe next door. So, you know, that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's, that's an obvious one that we're, we're mm -hmm. working together. And uh, then you're, you're kind of trying to, trying to encourage people. I mean, I'm up in the north end of Lewis, and we're trying to encourage people to come to, to the north end of Lewis. So it's working together with other uh, tourism providers about showing how... How, how, how different we are because there are so many similarities um, about uh, between everybody in Scotland or uh, the world but you're highlighting the differences that's what you want to do mm -hmm. people aren't coming here to see what's the same as where they are in America or no. Japan or, Starbucks and McDonald's yeah exactly that's not what they want they want, yeah. they want the authentic uh, taste of what it's like to live in these places and um, you know, we're, we're talking about Vikings in Shetland. We have the Vikings too, and lots of the, lots of place names, lots of the similar place names. So we've got we've got a combination of Gaelic culture, Viking culture. Um, you know, I found a, a Viking comb on the Croft. I found a, an Iron Age skull on the Croft. So there's lots of different things that you can talk about. It's not just like you're saying ramming Gaelic down their down their throats. It's part and partial of 
my life of the life of many other people mm. they are and the story of your business yeah. and and the area yeah. mm -hmm. well, can i ask a quick question what what's a viking comb it didn't strike me that the Vikings... It's what they use for the beards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like genuinely a hair, a hair cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was made out of, uh, I think it was a bone. bone usually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So wow. a bone and a, 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 with an antler handle on it. And is this the sort of thing that makes up part of your, the stories that you tell visitors when they come? Because somebody was asking here about what are your stories that you're telling? Mm -hmm. Oh, you have to pay for my stories. I'm not telling you. <laughs> 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 what kind of things are you, are you telling? No, well, it, it gen generally, it, it's more modern than that. I, I, I don't go that, ba that far back. I'm, I'm not... Um, I mean, people have this image of crofting being uh, old guys with beards. <laughs> 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 you know, and, and, and being, being old. But, you know, there's, there's modern crofting. I, I'm a modern crofter. I... I I, I do, I, I'm in broadcasting and, and crofting and, you know, whereas my grandfather was a Harris Tweed weaver and a, and a crofter. Today you've got crofters who are uh, professors or crofters who are uh, offshore oil, oil rig workers. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a dynamic industry where you've got different levels and there's different stories and it's not necessarily uh, just this romantic image that that everybody has that it's a, it's a living thing where there, there are lots of different levels and i think that's that's the important thing and if people want to hear the the romantic side of things with outlander and all that kind of stuff then fine we'll, mm -hmm. we'll give them we'll give them what they want <laughs> but i i want it to be authentic it's not just you know i'm not going to be standing there dressed in a harris tweed suit and that's not i wear a hoodie and and dungarees on about the croft you know that's that's what that's what it's, you that's about. You have to be authentic. That's you have the to be authentic. You have to be it? yourself. Yeah. I think not not this right. not 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 this fake thing. Mm -hmm. But being a Viking is quite authentic to you, <laughs> isn't it, Davey? Or well, a yeah, wizard? It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, um, it depends on what audience you're going for, and it's very true that, that what people are looking for is the authentic experience. That they're, they're not. Uh, you're very wise when you say you don't want the random stuff than people's thoughts. You, you don't want to artificially create something that, that you're going to have to live up to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because that becomes increasingly more difficult. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what, what you need to do is to give people the authentic experience. And in my experience, they're just as interested in modern Shetland um, as they might be in archaeological Shetland. Uh, some of the stories that you tell are, are old stories, the oldest I tell is probably a thousand years old, the actual story itself. Some of them are, you know, things that happened last year. Mm -hmm. um, people want to hear what's going on. They want to hear what, what's the difference between living in these islands and, and living elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, I met a couple of Canadians from Vancouver um, a week or so ago in one of the little community museums, and we spent an hour talking about underground ferries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, because they've got the same problems in Vancouver as we've got in Shetland. Yeah. <laughs> but but it, it, it's, it's that story, it's, it's, you know, it's the 14 hours on the ferry to get to Shetland, and then, you know, if you want to go to one of the outer isles, you, you've maybe got another three or four hours on a ferry uh, mm -hmm. to, to get out there. Just finding so ways to connect with people and what they're interested in. in. What they're interested in, reflecting on, people almost like to hear about themselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean that, that that's the, the the real thing. If you can commit, if you can make that connection, that that they can see that there's some sort of synergy between their life and your life. I'm mm. going to be borrowing that line by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's nothing people like more than to talk about themselves. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, let, let's think about some Maggie. I think it was Maggie that said she provided a, a phrase sheet. Yes, and she also does. Um, she also does. She's a community Gallic tutor in the off season as well. Oh, so fantastic! Yeah, well, she's got lots. And of then also Anna's just come in and said that the Tyree Music Festival runs Gallic uh, classes for Gallic classes for festival goers, which is uh, there's well, there another you thing go. that's, that's a, very popular with people who come and come for a few days. So you might, I mean, give it, learning some phrases is something that we can, we can mm. definitely do and that's something that you can pass on as well, get your staff involved and that can be fun. Mm -hmm. um, just a few simple phrases, whether that's Falche mm. in Gaelic or Martin Vag, good morning, um, or... Purpi. <laughs> That's all Richard knows, purple. That's purple. Uh, <laughs> you probably knew I, that. I, I can't, I guess, <laughs> I, I didn't know that. Done that yeah. So we can, learn some, we can learn some phrases and we can pass those on, we can maybe have some sheets, but we don't necessarily need to be the ones um, teaching them the language, but we can incorporate it. Some other ways, perhaps, um, 
on your website. Obviously, your, your, your business name in a lot is Gaelic already, and that's a really great way for your business to be able to tap into that interest. So when people are searching using keywords like Gaelic language, you know, Scots, whatever, um, then it's going to show up and that's going to help help your business as well. Caroline, that's maybe something you might think about mm -hmm. doing too. You've got bilingual, you've got Gaelic actually translations so my, my, on your website. My, my website's totally bilingual, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. So we've got phrases, we've got the website, we, maybe signs as well. What about um, bilingual signs? Is that something that, that you do quite a lot it's, in Shetland? It's something that we do. We have village signs that are bilingual, mm -hmm. uh, which we'll use, but they actually go not into mud and Shetland dialect, they go back into the ancient northern language. Which is different. And do individual uh, businesses have signs, for example, like Taipik, which is uh, in Gaelic is the toilet, little house, yeah. so, which it used to be, I suppose, uh, yeah. a little lighthouse. Um, signs, you know, specific to their business that are, you know, bilingual. Others are, are less so. That there's some businesses that, that will embrace it, but there's so much of those that, that dialect Scots uh, so uh, uh, the words that you would normally use that are, are strongly dialect are ones that are very difficult sometimes to fit into signpost in a modern business. Yeah. Um, what we do do is, is we do a lot of work with tour guides um, to make sure that um, they've got at least some smattering of dialect amongst their stuff. Because surprisingly enough, there's not that many of our tour guides that are native dialect mm. speakers. Mm. Um, but we also do a leaflet range that, that you know, we, we translate some words for people. Mm -hmm. um, very what are often people most in interested in learning? What kind of words? The, the, there are two words that most, that a lot of people know when they arrive in Shetland, dialect words. One of them is Bongsi, and the other one is, ta <laughs> one other one is Tammy Nori. So it's two bird names, so it's, mm -hmm. it's great skewers and puffins. That, I mean, that's the the two things that they so already many people know come to Shetland for bird watching. Yeah. It's a huge part of you know the reason yeah. people come there. So it makes sense yeah. that the thing they're coming for is something that you we would want to tap into, uh, in terms of the language as well. And you know, so so we've got a leaflet that, that's got all the uh, most of the common bird names translated. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a leaflet that translates uh, wildflower names uh, into Shetland dialect because they've all got very distinctive names mm -hmm. uh, in dialect. So. And, you know, we, we've got other bits and pieces that, you know, there's a little book called Myths for Words that, that people can pick up that, that, that gives translations of a lot of uh, uh, dialect phrases. Mm -hmm. But it's very, very um, simply written. And it, accessible. It's, it's very, <laughs> very accessible and it's got lots of nice photographs in it and it's, it's not heavy going at all. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it's about that kind of thing. It, it's about allowing people to dip in at the level that they want to mm -hmm, dip in. Mm -hmm. if, if you start trying to yeah. push it too hard, then they'll, they'll back off from you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's using what's already around you and what the interest is already there for, whether that's birds or whether that's the animals and the craft. Yeah or what that might be for your business, Caroline. And it also might be um, about your sense of place, about your area. We did mention earlier on about um, the number of Gaelic words for hill. Yes. Um, and, and a lot of, of geographical features will have Gaelic names that we can maybe find out you know, what, what those are, wh where those come from, what the translations of those are, bring to life the landscape. Mm. And the landscape's another big part. I mean, Shetland's got quite, I remember being quite struck when I first went to Shetland about there's no trees, <laughs> and you know, and 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 it's very distinctive. Yeah. And obviously, where we are here is really such a beautiful part of the world. And the, the, the that sense of place, using the the language as an in for for describing that and finding out more about that. Um, and you know, I, I mean, what about for you, Donald? What about the actual the island itself and and place names and everything? Is that something that people are interested in? Yeah, I think. What I, what I quite often like doing is, particularly with international visitors, and, and if, they're, if they're European in particular, I like looking at the similarities. Mm -hmm. and the other thing I do, this is good often a wee tangent, is pick up hitchhikers okay. <laughs> and talk to them, because it's quite, you know, it's really interesting, and, um, talking to them about, about language as well. Uh, because the, the, the particularly Scandinavian or, or, or German, French, there are lots of Gaelic words which are which are similar, similar. Mm -hmm. and it's and it's uh, it, like you're saying, yeah. talking about themselves. It's 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 tying things back to them, yeah. and the, uh, you know you I, I can think of Danish people, French people, German people that I've spoken to, and we're like, oh yeah, these words are similar, these words are similar, and you know it's 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 tying tying it back, and 
Um, you know, and then, then even talking about Shetland there, you know, I can, I'm thinking of things that are, that are similar in, in uh, you know, we, we're, we're connected yeah. in terms of the Vikings and, yeah. and the sea and things like that. Today, we're, we're so far apart because road and air are the main yeah. forms of transport, but whereas, you know, the time of the Vikings, we were, we were on, the, on, the, on the motorways yeah. there. So <laughs> yeah. there are so many connections between, between places, and it's just finding... Um, finding out how to make these ties. I think that, that that's probably the most important thing that I, I would take from this today. Is it's it's about connections with people rather than mm -hmm. rather than anything else. And and Davy, you said one of the things that people love um, when they're on tours, for example, is when you talk to somebody else using the dialect and they see it in action. They actually hear a conversation, yeah. a natural conversation. They hear people communicating. Uh, yeah, I mean that that's a um, a very sort of valuable tool. I mean, I used to. to tour guide well i shouldn't say we, we we did tour guiding what we did was storytelling on a bus right which is, <laughs> is a kind of different thing um we, we sort of knew vaguely the places that we were going through and could tell some of them but mostly it was about telling stories to people um but when you stopped and got off the bus and went for a cup of coffee or whatever he and i would converse in broad Shetland dialect because of the, and people were fascinated to listen to that because th th there's a difference in rhythm, there's a difference in sentence structure, and, mm -hmm. and, and you know they would come up after they'd heard us doing that and, and ask specific questions about the dialect and not just about you know the place that we were at. The dialect suddenly became something that was was very different. And, mm -hmm. and something that they were really seriously interested in. So we need to find a local speaker so we can get them to and come then, in and maybe <coughs> bring... And that's something that you could do, find a, a storyteller like yourself and bring them into your business, especially around events. And you've got, yeah. you know, you've got events like Up Helia, which, you know, are fantastic. And in the Highlands and Islands, there's always some music festival or there's mm -hmm. something going on which the language which will be a real, you know, big part of. Do you, can you think of anything off the top of your head? I'm putting you on the spot. Are there any events that you might be able to tap into a little bit more? I mean, we, we, we do do some uh, facias here, actually. Right. Um, but um, it's just not kind of part and parcel of what we do on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. um, and we will sign post, post people to go to, like, Kayleys and things mm -hmm. like that. But in terms of actually the language side, I think that's where maybe this area probably falls short, or, mm -hmm. or from what I know. But that's maybe me just not really having a full understanding of mm -hmm. what's actually mm -hmm. out there because mm -hmm. one of my questions to you was was going to be you know where, where can you um get translations or where can you get help with integrating some mm -hmm. of the the gallic into the business but that's maybe mm -hmm. you know something that's that's obviously on the, the high kind of toolkit mm -hmm. um i have actually renamed my house um into gallic which i completely forgot about as so long as it's not type book <laughs> I've seen houses called type book and they, they, they don't no. realise that it's toilet that they're calling the house. <laughs> it's okay, I haven't done that. I'm sure it's Time not too late. <laughs> <laughs> what have you called it? You Take A, so it's Ice House in Gaelic. All right, okay. Now you're going to tell me that it's wrong. Type, type J, okay, okay, that's fine. Type J, okay. 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 <laughs> well, there, one of the things actually in, um, in the toolkit is um, we've got some letters. We've got some letters actually from visitors. I thought it was quite interesting um, just to sort of reinforce all the things things that we've we've heard from you guys about the sort of things that they're interested in and this one is from, from Suzanne um, they are from uh, they, they live in Brussels German uh, and she says uh, throughout her stays I've developed a keen interest for what Brussels in Belgium, Belgium. <laughs> huh? Brussels in Belgium she said she's German but she lives oh, in, okay. in Belgium oh, right, okay. sorry I, I, I didn't make that very clear <laughs> <laughs> I, my geography is bad, Richard, but it's not that long. Um, she says, through our stays, I've developed a keen interest for Gaelic culture, local history and the language. It started with trying to understand what place names meant um, and the indications on the walking maps and understand the names of Scottish whiskies. So okay. that's another one that we, uh, Richard, now he perks up. Um, I, I, I love tourist attractions that give insights into local history, how the people lived in the past, what they used to eat um, and the language they spoke, why they left the islands or had to leave. So that's... That just shows you there really is an mm -hmm. interest there. And these are all things that we can tap into. The food and drink side of things, Caroline, mm -hmm. I, I think that's something as well that we've not mentioned yet. But there's another opportunity on menus. And that's something yeah. that you're changing yeah. all the time anyway. So mm -hmm. it's not like you're going to having to take a sign off the wall and do a translation. That's something that's an opportunity there. Yeah. And, and, you know, naming the, the names of dishes, you know, using local food names. What about in, Sh in Shetland? What, uh, uh, that's really quite interesting because most of the native Shetland uh, dishes are the bits of an animal that they couldn't sell <laughs> right. and they ate themselves 
Um, so it tends to be a bit of a creative process trying to make that palatable to the, the, the modern audience. Yeah. Um, I mean, things like roasted mutton, which is, is um, smoked and dried and salted mutton. I had some sent in the post from Shetland once. Yeah. Um, it, it's powerful stuff. <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll send you some gooka. Uh, I've, I've tried some of that. Uh, Donald Murray brought some of that up for us. Oh, yeah. uh, it's an acquired taste as well. Yeah, I, I think we, we have the same the same thing. Where our, where our traditional foods are, uh, you know, your black puddings, which are, yeah. Yeah. you know, your haggis, your your uh, your kankropik, which is yeah. uh, you probably have something like this as well, which is a, a fish head it's, stuffed with yeah. its liver. Yeah, we, you know, yeah, so. we, yeah we've got, we call it kankropik. <laughs> so, so I had so, some of that when I was in Lewis yeah. a couple of weeks mm -hmm. so, so food and drink and whiskies, yeah. of course. Yeah. How many of them, you know, how many of them have, don't have Gaelic names? You yeah. know, it's uh, some of them butcher Gaelic. Yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what, what, I, what we're talking here about about um, about business, and I, and I think that the most important thing is there is a financial interest in doing all this. It's not about Absolutely. being all lovely and cuddly and doing yeah. a thing for, for... Just to for, keep the for, language alive. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's not about that. And you, you mentioned eco things mm -hmm. earlier. And I, and I think I, I make the comparison quite often between um, being green. You know, why are we being green? Well, we're being green to save the environment. Okay. But then when you say to people, you're being green to save yourself money. Oh, okay. <laughs> now you're saying to people, you're, you're, you're going down the Gaelic route to save Gaelic. Okay. Yeah. You go down the Gaelic route to make yourself money. Yes. Okay, now you're talking. So that's that's <laughs> yeah. that's what it's about. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. who would have said that people were going to pay me money to come and muck out my hen house? <laughs> no, mm -hmm. nobody. You know, but, they, but it, it does happen. You might start getting people to pay you to come and clean the rooms. You know, <laughs> you know, there might be. You know, but you've, you've got to be creative. You've got to think outside the box. And you've got to think of ways to, to make yourself money. That's, Absolutely. That's what it's all about. And, yeah. and it is about standing out, isn't yeah. it? Because these days, especially with places like Airbnb, if somebody can just go online, click, 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 and they can yeah. get something cheaper, well, you have to make your business something special. What's it got to that's going to add value, that's going to give them the experience that they can't get yeah. elsewhere? Um, Richard, have we got any more comments coming through? Well, uh, yeah, we've got loads and loads of comments coming through. Well, not loads, but a fair few. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I like the idea of that, like, like bringing in the language to your menus and to your, the whiskey and that kind of thing. You know, you, you, to get to level three whiskey, you've got to unlock <laughs> level one and two, you know, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Like, that sounds really good. But uh, Catherine's just set, said that she's just really enjoying hearing your stories, you know, and, and like, you, you know, the reality of what you guys are doing and like, not like a sort of Hollywood version of mm. Scotland, you know, and mm. I'm very much picked up on the idea of like, we don't do tour guiding, we do storytelling on a bus, <laughs> which is uh, yeah. a nice, and then just people sort of sharing sort of re some resources are here in the, in the chat room. So if you're watching this back, on YouTube, if you go back into the live stream version of it, you can see some of these resources that are being shared. But we will send out the toolkit um, to everybody who signed up. Is that right? Well, the, the toolkit will come eventually, but we are going to be sending out some really easy to um, to digest top tips, and we'll definitely be sending out via email some of these websites, especially the the dictionaries, yeah. which are really useful, it's so that you can straight away find some translations. But I mean, I think I mean I think um, that you know we've sort of highlighted that the people are really sort of interested in this kind of thing, and I've got a few mm -hmm. email addresses from people who are watching um, who we're going to try and get in touch with to see if you could sort of like you know give us some examples for the next webinar. Is that yeah. right? So we want well, to get people. Is that exactly what we want people to do? Because I've got a couple of people's email addresses. I'm just trying to persuade you, a few more of you, to give us your email address so we could get you to do a little video diary for us. <laughs> well, speaking of which, um, hopefully people who have been taking part in today's session might be inspired to join Caroline, who over the next three weeks, uh, we're going to have a, another webinar on the 19th, which is three weeks today, <laughs> and in the intervening period you are going to take this challenge mm -hmm. to see what you can do to start introducing a bit of Gaelic to your business. To say, I have to say mint sauce in Gaelic on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> mint sauce. Donald? Ugh, oh, don't put me on that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get mint sauce. We don't <laughs> get mint sauce. <laughs> you just yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Lamb. <laughs> um, so, Caroline, you're going to do that um, over the next three weeks. Have you got any thoughts from what we've been talking about, things that might be easy first steps to take? What yeah, it sounds all really quite basic, but I think filtering it through maybe some correspondence that we send out to our, our customers via email, that's kind of mm -hmm. easy. We've mentioned already about menus. I mean, we actually use quite a lot of kind of old style Scottish foods and sometimes ingredients. So we, we've got bannock, you know, as one mm. of our breads, but there's no real kind of discussion about it or it certainly isn't in Gaelic. Mm. Um, so that's kind of what I can think of at the moment. We do do a staff handbook. 
um, which talks about Scottish dress, about food, um, about slang words or kind of mm. Scottish words. Um, but actually, I think, you know, we can add to the, the handbook and put some in some, phrases, some, some yeah. exactly, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. some phrases in Gaelic. And I think it's really important that I get the team on board because mm -hmm. it's not actually just about me. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you can't do yourself, no, exactly. So they, they've got to buy into it. They've got to understand why, why we're doing this. What's it all for? And we may realize that actually it's not for us. You know, may, maybe it, it doesn't fit. But as long as we can signpost to where people can kind of get this information, mm -hmm. then that's absolutely fine. But I think certainly just baby steps, mm -hmm. filter it in, see how we go mm -hmm. and then take it from there. And see what resources you can find in your local area. Let's have a look around and see yeah. maybe if there's a storyteller, if there's a, speak, a language speaker. Mm. Yeah. Um, and yeah, what you can take from your, your local surroundings yeah. as well. That's and, and website as well, we spoke about, sorry. Yeah. And we do a blog, we do mm -hmm. two blogs a, a week so we can actually start kind of talking about anything. You could do a blog Gaelic. post about Gaelic. Yeah, exactly. It could be yeah. as simple as that, and yeah. then that's going to exist on your website, and that's always going to be yeah. there. So that's something that will, you know, have a, a life beyond that. Richard, any other suggestions? Do we can we can we convince anybody else to take part? Hopefully, I'm the sure email that addresses you've got. You are going to take part and join uh, Karen exactly. Um, we just somebody here. Arthur sent in a link to uh, our website, which has got two hundred useful Gaelic words and phrases. So all this kind of stuff is here in the uh, chat box here. But I was wondering, you know, we were talking about there was like a hundred words for hill and fifty words for bog. I, I, am I right in thinking in Shetland that, that you've got more than a hundred words for people who don't come from Shetland? Is that right? Like <laughs> no, we, we, well, no, we've basically got one, um, <laughs> which um, one that you can share anyway. One, one that you can share. <laughs> Uh, <coughs> no, Suthmouth is a, um, a strange what is that, kind yeah. of word. Uh, a Suthmouth was anybody that came to Lerwick through the Suthmouth of Lerwick Harbour. Right, it's okay. as simple as that. Um, and it used to be just a, a phrase that was applied to anybody that arrived from, from South. From the South. Which is pretty much everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, it sort of became used as a derogatory term. Yeah. Um, so you have to be quite careful now <laughs> about I heard it a lot when I went. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's literally yeah. people shouting it yeah. out yeah. everywhere I went. Yeah. I'm sure that's not true. Very friendly. <laughs> yeah. in uh, but uh, no, I, I mean, it didn't used to be a term insult at all. It was, it was just simply a descriptor. Not until yeah. they met Richard. <laughs> 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 well, okay, well, I think we probably uh, want to wrap things up. We don't want to take up uh, too much more of people's time, but hopefully you've been inspired. Um, you're going to join Car Caroline in the next three weeks to try and make, take some baby steps to introduce a little bit of the language. We've talked about having a look at your website. We've talked about learning some, some key phrases, perhaps. Uh, maybe signs, maybe. Maybe your menus. Um, thinking about the stories about the, the area, the local area, the history, the landscape. Um, or even music. We never d actually spoke about that. Yeah. Stick on Radon and Gale. <laughs> Gets it. Apparently visitors really interested in that. Breakfast time, it can be a real hit. Some nice gentle Gaelic uh, songs or, or fiddle music can be can be something that can be really easily I mean, Radio introduced. and Gale does other things. Yeah, they do, yeah. but it's just a suggestion. Um, so, yeah, that's. I think that's that's all we've got, really got time for because we've run on a little bit because we started, uh, we had a bit of a false start there. But very much, um, thank you so much to, to our guest, to Donna McSween from Erin Lott, David Cooper from Shetland, and obviously Caroline, thank you. Good luck. Thank uh, you. We'll look forward to hearing how you're getting on. Hopefully you'll do a little video diary for us, yeah. and maybe some of you guys will do one for us as well. Richard's going to be in touch. So keep an eye on our social media channels, on the Facebook page, on Twitter. Use the hashtag, hashtag Speak Scotland. Let us know how you're getting on. Share your experiences, share your advice, so we can get that added to the toolkit as well. And keep the conversations going. Maybe see if you could find somebody else who, uh, a business, another business who might benefit from this as well, and you could work together. So uh, in the meantime, as I said, keep an eye on your inbox as well. We're going to be sending you emails with some more advice there too. And you can come back to this page on live stream if you want to watch again or check out some of the comments on the chat box. There, but for now, uh, I've been Julia Sutherland. Uh, more than thing, I guess. Cheerio, and